Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Good Morning Namibia. Now, Namibia is one of the African countries grappling with a third wave of COVID-19 infections that is wreaking havoc under the continent's under-vaccinated population. The lack of vaccines in the country has stirred a commotion amongst the nation, leaving them with worries and fears. Now, joining me in studio this morning to talk about the current status of available vaccines in the country is the Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula. Dr. Shangula, good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and good to have me. Now, Doctor, I understand that uh, yesterday, uh, as people were heading to the Karatura Hospital, which is one of the vaccination points, uh, to receive uh, vaccines, uh, only a few selected people were able to be assisted. Uh, let's talk about what the current uh, availability of vaccines is in the country. Yes, um, it is correct that uh, yesterday when people went to Katutura vaccination site, at the start of the business, we only had 20 doses of AstraZeneca remaining and uh, 76 doses of Sinopharm. And therefore, it was not sufficient to vaccinate everybody who present himself or herself uh, at the vaccination site. Uh, this came about uh, as a result of that the vaccines which we have procured and the vaccines which were donated, they have all been used up. Only limited sites uh, around the country have limited uh, stock of the vaccines remaining. Mm -hmm. What is the current and accurate uh, status quo of the vaccines available uh, in Namibia. A few weeks ago, we also saw a report saying that, um, you know, the, 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 there are no more first doses of Sinopharm, um, you know, able to be administered. What is the current status quo in terms of how much AstraZeneca and how much Sinopharm we have, first doses and second doses? Yeah, um, uh, I mentioned that uh, in, 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 in terms of commerce, in terms of wind hook, uh, the Yesterday, there were only 20 doses of AstraZeneca and 76 doses of Sinopharm available. The rest has been used up. Uh, there are also some uh, doses available around the country uh, in, in the regions. But what happened is that uh, of late, we have seen an upsurge in interest for people to get vaccinated, which is a very good thing and which we, which we uh, uh, appreciate and welcome. Um, the provision of vaccines uh, has been a tricky issue. Since last year, we started with the process of procuring the vaccines. In actual fact, on the African continent, Namibia was the first to enroll with the COVAX, COVAX facilities. Uh, for the provision of the vaccines. Uh, to date, we have paid for one more than 100, uh, 108,000 doses of uh, AstraZeneca uh, to COVAX facility. Uh, however, we still have an outstanding delivery from uh, COVAX facility of 40,000 800 doses of AstraZeneca, which we expect any time. Uh, the situation pertaining to Namibia is not unique mm -hmm. because there has been a scramble for vaccines. And uh, what compounded the matter is also that the producing countries themselves also experience upset in the number of cases to the extent that they have reserved uh, the doses they pro produce for their own out country. We may remember that uh, while we were buying um, AstraZeneca under the trade name of Covishield from India, India experienced uh, a wave of COVID-19 pandemic. And as a result, 
they have actually ceased export of the, of the vaccine. So that source of vaccine for Namibia was no longer available. Mm -hmm. That also happened with many other countries in Europe that they reserved their vaccines for their own people. Mm -hmm. And uh, those countries which have no production capacity like Namibia have been affect, uh, negatively affected as a result. Mm -hmm. uh, two questions, Doctor. You, you mentioned that the top-ups of the AstraZeneca and the Sinopharm uh, vaccines will be arriving soon. We should be expecting them soon. I'd like to know if you can give us a, a more clear understanding of when perhaps that might be. I also understand that we're trying to procure Johnson & Johnson vaccines and also uh, the Russia Sputnik V vaccine. Um, and when can we expect these to arrive in the country as well? Yes, uh, you are correct. We are expecting a Sinopharm vaccine to arrive. Um, most of the vaccines which we are supposed to have, to have received in June have not been delivered up to now. But I am pleased to inform the public that on Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday, we will receive 250,000 doses of Sinopharm these uh, doses we bought directly from the manufacturer in China. And uh, we have a, a, a firm date of delivery, which is Saturday. We are also expecting um, 40,800 doses of AstraZeneca from the COVAX facilities. These doses, we have been uh, waiting for them since June, but they, we have received indication that they will be arriving in July, that is this month. Initially, it was at the beginning of the, of the, of the month. Uh, today, it is the 13th, so we expect it to arrive uh, most probably by next week. So that is what we can expect. We have also procured another 333,333 doses um, of Johnson & Johnson. This one we have uh, procured them through the AU <coughs> under the IVAX, and they are distributed as follow. In, um, this one will only come in August. Mm -hmm. Nine, more than 9,500 9, um, and uh, 74 doses will be arriving in August. They will be staggered. And then 70, almost 18,000 of Johnson & Johnson we expect to arrive in September. Um, and then during the last uh, quarter of uh, this year, that's from uh, September onwards, we expect 35,338. 35, and then the remaining of the doses of the 333,333, they will be delivered in the year 2022. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you can be uh, uh, assured that there will be staggering delivery of the vaccine uh, going forwards. Uh, in addition, we have also received uh, a donation from the United States of America of Johnson & Johnson's. Uh, for 165,200 doses. Mm -hmm. And this one will be delivered uh, between July and, um, and, and September. Now, <coughs> we did also order the Sputnik V mm -hmm. uh, from the agencies uh, of, the, of the manufacturer. And while we were f f uh, finalizing the transaction, unfortunately, we were informed that the Sputnik vaccine was no longer available for Namibia. So there are these uh, issues which comes up with the procurement of the, of the vaccines. And, uh, but there is that hope, as I have uh, mentioned, that from Saturday we'll have delivery of the vaccines and our vaccination campaign will continue.
You mentioned earlier that there's been a surge in interest with Namibians, you know, taking the vaccine. What, what do you attribute this to? Well, there, there might be a number of factors uh, at play here. Uh, number one, I think the Namibian have realized that uh, the information which is coming from, from government is, uh, is correct and uh, the anti-vaccine campaign, anti-vaccine lobby which has been uh, mounted in Namibia, Namibia is now losing ground. So people start having confidence in the messages which the government is uh, giving to the public and they start to believe and now they are forthcoming to get their, their vaccines. The other thing is the fact that whenever we, every day when we give our update on the situation, we also indicate the vaccination status of individuals, whether those who have uh, tested positive or those who have, who have died. And in rare abris, uh, we have not uh, uh, seen a person who has been fully vaccinated uh, who has died. Uh, there were conspiracy theories to say since the, we started the vaccinations, the number of uh, positive cases has gone up, but the fact on the ground have indicated that in actual fact, the majority, more than 99% of people who either get infected or who get uh, admitted to hospital, um, they have not been vaccinated. So the preponderance number of people who have been uh, vaccinated, they are not among those whom we announce as having tested positive or who have succumbed mm -hmm. uh, to the disease. So there are quite imperatives uh, in the fact that the reality on the ground really indicates the benefits of the vaccination. And then people start to, 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 to believe uh, what we are informing them. Doctor, at the current rate at which Namibians are getting vaccinated, and also at the current rate at which our vaccines are coming into the country to be able to vaccinate our people, when are we most likely to reach herd immunity at this pace? Well, the, the target depends on mostly two variables. The first one is the availability of the doses, and the second one is the readiness of the individuals to come to vaccination point. Uh, we have um, uh, a little uh, control over the supply because the only thing we, ha we can do is to buy, but you can only buy if the product is available on the market. So if the, uh, the vaccines are not available on the market, there is nothing uh, or little one can do. So that is one. The availability of the vaccine plays is a very important variable in this uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. Secondly, which I think we have succeeded now, is the willingness of the people to avail themselves for the vaccination. Now, we have seen over the last week that all our vaccination points, the queues are long, which is a very good indication. We are going to meet that expectation full on, that mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, in, the, in, in the whole country, we have got uh, more than 380 fixed vaccination point plus mobile outreach, plus um, uh, um, uh, mobile and outreach uh, teams mm -hmm. to go to all the corners of the country to have people vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Do you foresee, doctor, that we might get to a point where, you know, getting vaccinated becomes mandatory? Well, um, at the present moment, our, our, our policy is that it must be a voluntary. That is our current policy. Uh, however, uh, there are 
provisions in the Public and Environmental Health Act to say that when there is a, an imminent threat to the lives of, uh, of the people uh, in terms of the pandemic, then that option is, is still available. However, our good consideration is that this must be a voluntary uh, exercise because what is important for, is for everybody to realize that you are actually protecting yourself. You are protecting yourself, you are protecting the fami your families and the neighborhood. Let me just maybe well on this point to say that there is so much talked about uh, individual rights. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And also our policy on a voluntary uh, vaccination is premised on that uh, principle. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the right to, 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 to get vaccination or to agree to get vaccination. At the same time, that right should not infringe on somebody else's right. Now, you have the right to accept or to decline to get vaccinated. But the next person to you has also the right to be protected from you. Now, your right ends as far as your preparedness is concerned, but it does not transmit beyond the fact that you can be a danger to the pers right. first person. Now, if you reach a point when you are a danger to the next person because having exercises your right not to be vaccinated, then you are infringing on the right of the next, of the next of another person who has got the right to be protected from you. So we have to look at uh, this at both sides, not mm -hmm. only from individual right, but also from uh, community or public individuals' rights as well. On that note, Doctor, any uh, final remarks you'd like to leave us with this morning as we round off our discussion? Well, I, 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 I would like to first and foremost uh, to assure the Namibian public that the government is doing everything possible to ensure that we bring the uh, pandemic under control. Well, we have a very formidable weapon, that's the vaccine. Uh, the other day, uh, those who were watching soccer, uh, the Euro 2020, uh, I was so much impressed to see so many people who are filling up the stadium and none of them was wearing a, a mask. Mm -hmm. Why so? It is because those countries, the European countries, they produce vaccines, they, in, they made sure that their people are vaccinated. It was also a voluntary vaccinated. The awareness was very high. Mm -hmm. People went and get vaccinated. So the majority of the population in those countries, they have been fully protected. And that's why they were able to go and watch Euro 2021, 20, the soccer, without masks. Mm -hmm. And I would like to appeal to the Namibians that let us embrace the vaccination uh, campaign which the government has instituted so that we reach herd immunity, so that we vaccinate more than 60% of the population so that we can also enjoy the benefit of vaccination to be pro fully protected to such an extent that we will not be required to wear a mask anymore. Because if everybody is protected, it means everybody is protecting everybody else. Correct. And that is our goal. Yeah. Dr. Want Shangula, to that. thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you for being here on GMN. It's a pleasure for me. That thank was uh, the Ministry of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula, speaking to us this morning. We'll be right back after the short break.